Welcome to Big Country Gaming. This is your host, OK State 56. We're in the business of making gaming great again. So let's get rolling. All right, y'all. I hope y'all have already watched episodes one and two of our brand new Missouri A&M Bluebirds Dynasty. If you haven't already, go back to the channel and check those out first. Today, we're going to show you all the recruiting board and the schedule, and then it's on to week one, baby. So as I said earlier, we're going to take a, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the recruiting board, and I want to explain to you guys how I'm going to set recruiting up so that it's not super easy. I can't just turn it around in one season. It's going to take me several seasons, um, but that's the plan anyway. I... I don't know how this is going to work with the with all 12 teams being walk-ons. Like I said, we may end up winning 6, 8, 10 games depending on just how good the other teams are. All the teams are even, so even though I've got some sliders in here to make things particularly bad, it may still be okay. So... I, I don't know. I am going to tell you guys what the recruiting rules are right now. So, I am going to do the recruiting board. I have added 33 targets, and I've done that for a few reasons. Number one, I am not going to recruit... I'm sorry, I'm not going to scout any of these players. I'm not going to do any preseason scouting, and I'm not going to do anything during the season. These are going to be totally, we're not using any points, we're not doing anything. We are just going to simply add them to the targets, and then that's it. So, they will only commit if they really like us. My intention with that is, is that we will probably have... The first, oh, two or three seasons, mainly one-star athletes. We may get a few two-stars once we start recruiting. I have written down that after the second season, we may start, maybe we don't scout, but we'll start adding points and we'll recruit that way. Um... I have never done this before in a way that you don't you don't add the points to to the to the player every week. So we may get halfway through this and not have a single recruit that wants to sign with us. If that's the case, then next season we'll change it. We'll do the recruiting points, but we will not do any scouting. I don't like the scouting because I think it gives away it takes away that surprise. You don't know what guys are going to perform or how well they're going to perform until you get them on campus. Even if they're playing in high school ball games, even if they're from the top schools in California, Texas, Florida, you really still don't know how those guys are going to perform. So I think it's a really cool way to keep it about as authentic as we can. So the next big rule, during the first season, I can only scout one-star athletes. In season two, I'm, I may change the rules, but my goal is to only scout two star athletes. I may cap that. I may cap that to say two or three two star athletes. And then in season three, we'll do the same thing. Three star athletes only, nothing higher. But I may put a cap on that, such as three three, three star athletes. So we'll see how that thing kind of transforms. I will let you guys know after at the end of each season how that goes. And then the last big rule for recruiting is we can only recruit from our home state, boundary states. And then if there's like some really logical pipeline states that maybe aren't boundary states, I'm okay with those. For example, Missouri, they've got a lot of guys from, te from Texas. So if we were to recruit Texans, 
I'd probably be okay. That's that's pretty logical. There's so many guys in Texas that it really doesn't make a dent, especially at uh, the one-star level. So I've already added a bunch of guys. I actually didn't add any Texas guys. That may be something that I do next season. As of right now, our team needs, we actually don't have any because everybody of, of 48 players, we have 44 freshmen, only one sophomore, and then three juniors. So we really don't have any outstanding needs as far as roster depth goes. But obviously with our overall being as low as it is, we have needs across the entire board. So I just wanted to show you guys this screen just so you kind of have an idea of where things are. And I want to show you my school. The biggest issue I have with this team, you guys probably know this by now, I am from Missouri. So I, I really wanted to do something that represented Missouri. And this seemed like a really cool way to do it. But the only thing I don't like it like about it is that there's no way to change. You know, whoever created this team gave a bunch of the... You know, pro potentials, A, academic prestige, I'm okay with that. A plus, that's fine, no big deal. But if you're going to be that, then probably most of this other stuff is going to be, you know, Bs or Cs. Athletic facilities, I wish that was more like a C or somewhere in there. And, okay, looks like it is time to go ahead and take a look at the recruiting board. We're going to try to move through this pretty quickly. Then I'll show you guys the final schedule. And that will be it for this episode. So, at quarterback, we've got John Johnson. And he is 6'1", 202 from... Palos Hills, Illinois. He is a pocket passer, which is just fine in an air raid. And it looks like we are not even in his top four or five quarter um, uh, teams yet. So I'm interested to see how that changes. Our other quarterback on the board is Donnie Handy. East Moline, Illinois. He's a scrambler type. He's six foot 190. That guy sounds pretty exciting, but our big rival, Eastern Missouri, is number one, and Iowa Methodist is number two. So we've got to take them away. At running back, let's do this by position. At running back, we've got Kyle Lewis. He's 5'11, 210 from Carthage, Missouri. This is a must win recruit right here Carthage Missouri if you've got guys in state you've got to win those battles we've got a Juco transfer from Stillwater Oklahoma so this guy he may end up going straight over to Oklahoma State we'll see they are not in his top five as it stands right now uh, I would I wouldn't expect them to probably go after him being a one star but he's six foot two oh two. I mean, that's that's a really good size for a running back. As of right now, only one receiver was eligible to be recruited by us, and he's from Berkeley, Missouri. He's 5'10, 190, and again, Eastern Missouri and Iowa Methodist sit right there at the top. Rashid Goodwin. Let's hope we can win that one too. Any in-state guys you want to win, start getting that pipeline going. I went tight end heavy in this one just simply because we don't have any eligible receivers. I can always sign some guys if they need to, they can transfer. I may have eight tight ends, who knows? But we'll see what happens. At 6'4", 232, I love the size this guy brings to the table, but as you guys can see, Washington, Army, Minnesota, Mizzou, that's gonna be a tough battle, we'll see. Another JUCO transfer, 6'4", 251, Quentin McIntosh. He's a blocking style tight end. 
and he's got interest from a few smaller schools, so we might actually have a chance with him. Brad Lambert, 6'4", 245, Burlington, Iowa. Another blocking tight end. Iowa State, Northern Illinois, and Ball State. That's going to be a tough battle. And finally, Dustin Whitehead. He's 6'3", 250 from Hare, Oklahoma. He's already got interest from Tulsa, Oklahoma State, Colorado State, and Kansas. So, Dustin Whitehead might be another guy that we might not be able to sign. So, my biggest target is probably going to be... Man, all three of the or all four of these guys look hard to sign. Willie Perez, we might as well go strong for him since he's got good size. And he's from Missouri. Offensive line wise, we gotta improve as much as we can right now. Andrew Hancock, 6'6, 320. That's beautiful offensive tackle size. He sits at 56 overall. And looks like he has some interest from some smaller schools. He's from Arlington Heights, Illinois. Trey Thomas, another Illinois boy. 6'8", 326. Holy cow, that's a big old country guy. Lance Lee, 6'7", 310 from Coweta. Coweta is one of my favorite places to go every. My dad's old football coach. Uh, lived there for about 60 years, and we used to go to his house all the time and go see him after the football games. It was a lot of fun. But anyway, Lance Lee here is from Coweta, Oklahoma. He's got some interest from a few big schools. We'll see if we can't steal him away. Greg Baker, 6'6", 277, Pine Bluff, Arkansas. He's a pass-blocking guy, so we definitely want to get that guy. Jacob Brandt, 6'5", 286, another pass-blocking guy. Does not have a whole lot of interest right now, so that's a good thing. We might be able to steal him away. At guard, we've got a Juco transfer, 6'7", 281 from Hugo, Oklahoma. K-State's on his list, so that tells me he's probably Big 12 potential. At 58 overall, he would be one of the better offensive linemen on our team. Clifford Cox, 6'3", 306, from Crystal Lake, Illinois. He does have some interest from a few bigger programs, but I think with his overall being as low as he is, 6'3", 306, we could probably get him. At defensive end, we've got John Nance from Guyman, Oklahoma, 6'5", and 262 pounds. Now... Arkansas looks like he looks like they're the only ones that have shown true interest in him that is a bigger school so this might be an opportunity to steal him but he's only 44 overall he could be a guy that develops he's a pass rusher which is exactly what we need this conference uses a lot of air raid so we got to have quick guys off the line We've got a JUCO transfer here, Robert Baker from Northbrook, Illinois. Seems like there's a lot of Illinois guys on here. He is 6'2 and 263 pounds. He's a balanced guy, which in this league, I don't know that that's really big enough or fast enough. <clears throat> and finally, <clears throat> we've got Brad Marshall. From Noble, Oklahoma, 6'3", 239. Defensive tackle, Michael Ingram from Coralville, Iowa. And, of course, Iowa Methodist has their sights right on him already. He's 6'2", 275, so I don't blame him. He's a pass rusher, though, which is even better. Iowa Methodist is trying to get that pass rusher that they need. Tyrone Loves, 6'1", 266, from the Village, Oklahoma. Oklahoma State and K-State and Baylor are already all over this guy. So we'll see how things go with him. He's a run stopper, which is not a big need, I don't believe, for me. I'd rather have a pass rusher type. Jamil Hardy, 6'3", 
63268 from Jacksonville, Arkansas. All smaller schools. It looks like UTSA is in the lead, but we'll see if we can't overcome that. Todd Cook at defensive tackle, 6'1, 295. That's a decent size. He's a pass rusher from Weatherford, Oklahoma. But Oklahoma State's already on the board. Not sure we might be able to get around that. Jeremy Taylor, 6'4, 269 from Pekin. I don't know how you say that. Pekin, Illinois. And K State's in the lead. Iowa Methodist has beat us to the punch yet again. Finally, at outside linebacker from Hugo, Oklahoma, 6'1", 224, Jake Mason. We definitely need some help at linebacker. Juco transfer, Christian Dixon from South Sioux City, Nebraska. I'm surprised that Omaha State is not on this board. We'll see if they maybe pop up later in the season. He's 6'4", 228, so that's something that I definitely want to jump on. Mike Green, 6'2", 211 from Seymour, Tennessee. And again, I'm pretty surprised that Westland State isn't all over him. Ernest Thomas, another JUCO transfer at 6'1", 221. He's from Dayton, Tennessee. And I would figure Wesleyan State would be over all over him as well. At corner, we've got Devin Schneider from Buffalo Grove, Illinois. He's on the shorter side at 5'10", 173. Jason Banks is a coverage corner at 6'185", from Belleville, Illinois, which is right across the border kind of in the North St. Louis area. So we may have a really good shot. It's only like two and a half, maybe three hours away from home. Let's see what that says. Proximity to home, B plus. So that's really great. George Presley here, 61 overall. He's a JUCO transfer, 5'11", 189 from Makokita, Iowa. Never heard of it. Unfortunately, I apologize for butchering that. If someone's from that area, you can send me a message on Twitter and tell me how to pronounce it. George Presley, 5'11", 189, and Iowa State's already all over him, so I expect that he will most likely sign with them. Lastly, Tavares Smith, 5'11", 174 from Oak Forest, Illinois. We probably have a pretty decent chance to sign him, but Northwestern and Illinois are Big Ten rivals that will be fighting head-to-head -head for him. And it looks like our last athlete is strong safety Adam Maxwell from Itabel, Oklahoma, 5'11", 172. That's a quite a bit small on the smaller side for a strong safety so maybe we won't want to sign him I guess we could we could see how things go all right guys so that that's it for the depth chart that is it for the recruiting board so the last and final thing is just to show you guys the schedule the finalized schedule and then that's it. It'll be time for game time. So week one, we've got a bye. Week two, we're looking at Akron. We're playing our first ever game at home against the Zips. I would expect that we probably lose this game. The Zips, are, even though they're bad, they are not Missouri A&M historically bad. So... Our week three game is playing at Mizzou in Columbia, only about 30 minutes away from Jeff City. So we are pumped for this game. Week four, Baylor at Baylor in Waco. Week five, Arizona State going to Tempe. And week six is our very first 
Sun Belt Conference game against Wesleyan State. We are at home for this game. Jeff City will be rocking. Our first away conference game, we go to Houston to play the Crusaders. In week nine, this is one of our perhaps unofficial rivals, Texas Poly, who was second place in the conference last year, and they actually beat us in the division. They're not in our division this this year. They were they were we were both in the North Division last year, but things got switched around. So Texas Poly in week nine. We go to Iowa Methodist. I am really excited for you guys to see what Iowa Methodist looks like at home in those green uniforms. It's going to look great. And Peoria Tech, the aviating ducks are going to come to Missouri in week 11. And then week 12 is rivalry week. Missouri, Missouri a and plays Eastern Missouri in Kirkwood. Kirkwood is in St. Louis, the southwest side, so probably about two hours away or so. And in week 13, we are looking at Omaha State. I'm very interested to see how Omaha State does this season. I can't wait to play them at home. And the last game of the year, Kansas Tech Knights. We do not play Oklahoma A&M, which is Wayne Sterling's grandfather's team. Maybe we will see them in the conference championship, but if things go according to plan, we likely will not win more than a few games for season one. And it may take us three or four seasons to get there. So, all right, guys. I hope you really like everything. I hope everything's going kind of the direction that that draws a lot of attention and a lot of viewers in. This is pretty much how things are going to go from now on. So, go to Twitter, Big Country Gaming. Go to Twitch, OK State 56 Or go to YouTube, Big Country Gaming. Drop a like, a follow, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. All those great things. But watch the content. Let me know what you think. Drop some comments. And just give me some good feedback. All right, guys. This is OK State 56.